good morning my dear students today we are going to discuss about a topic called splitter window okay in vc++ the topic is splitter window right so this is going to be a continuation of the previous topic in the previous class we discussed about mdi and sdi forms right we have discussed about mdi and sdi forms so mdi is multiple document interface wherein you can view any number of documents at the same time where in STI you can only create one frame window and only view one document in that particular frame window that is a concept of FTI so in STI as is the concept of SDI so in STI if you have to view more than one document is it possible no it's not possible as per our concept of MDI and STI in SDI you cannot view more than one document at the same time okay how can we overcome this particular drawback what can we do about it is we can create something known as a splitter window. So the splitter window will divide your STI screen also can be divided into various windows and you can view different different documents in each window. From each window you can view different documents. So how can you do that? You can do that using a concept called splitter windows. Right. So in an STI form if I have to create more than one view more than one document view we have to create i will have to use a class called c splitter window class so i have to use a class called c splitter window class what the class will do is it will create a it will split the window into different views so each view can have one document per view you can have one document can be viewed in one particular view so how can how is this uh, splitter window created the splitter window is created like this the whole window, the frame window which you have created, the STI frame window is divided into rows and columns which means it is going to have horizontal panels and vertical panels. You are going to have horizontal and vertical panels, right. Each and every pan is going to be each and every cell or let us uh, like uh, just imagine an excel sheet where you have rows and columns. So each particular cell here you call it as a pan. So each pan can hold one particular document view, right. And each and every cell or each and every pan is divided using the splitter bar. So it is going to be divided by a splitter bar. So you can also resize the splitter bar. I can change the size of the particular window. So that is also possible in splitter windows. Right. So each pan here contains one view. So one view, we can view one particular document. So many documents can be viewed when you create many pans. When you create many pans in your single STI frame window you can view many documents. So we are trying to solve the limitations of STI form. Right. So when I am creating a splitter window in an STI form what happens is so when I am creating an STI form there is only the base C frame window will be there there is only C frame window in that window I can create splitter window. Splitter window can be created in that basic window which is the frame window itself. Right. Wherein if it is an MDI form splitter window can also be created in MDI forms. So where will you create the splitter window is the MDI form structure is like this. So you have the top level of MDI parent form then you have the MDI child form and where child form will have the MDI document frame window. So the document frame window can be split up using C split window class and it can be done. Okay, So this can be done in MDI also. So this is called splitter window. Right. Next, we are going to discuss about the different types of splitter windows. Right. So we can create splitter windows in frame window class. Yes, that is understood. What are the different types of uh, splitter windows I can create? The first type is called as a static type. As the name suggests, you know, you cannot change. Once you have created the rows and columns, you have split the window into rows and columns, you cannot change it. It is not dynamic. So that type of splitter window is called as a static splitter window, right. So once it is created, it cannot change the number of rows and columns, right. And the second thing about, second point about static window is you can resize. So once you have created rows and columns, so you can resize, it does not have to be uniformly same size, not required. So depending on the size of the document, you can resize your pan. So pan or the particular cell where you are opening one document can be resized. So in static window that is possible and how many such rows and columns you can create in a static splitter window you can create as much as maximum of 16 rows and 16 
columns. You can create a maximum of 16 rows and 16 columns where in a static splitter window. Right? So, let us see what is a dynamic splitter window. So, as we know already, after you have created a splitter window, you can still, what you can do? You can do split and unsplit action, which means you can change the number of rows and columns even after it has been created. So, that is the first point about your dynamic splitter window. The second point is, here I said, you, you, it's like your uh, Excel sheet. I said in here, you can, sir, Excel, like the Excel sheet. In static window, you can resize them, I said. Okay. So, when you do the resize in static splitter window, it acts, reacts like same as your Excel sheet, wherein if you are going to increase the size of one particular column, the size of the next column is going to shrink a little bit. If it is going to be fixed, it may shrink. So, so one change or resize of one particular column can affect the other column. But here in dynamic splitter window, that does not happen. It is completely independent of each other. But the only restriction here is you can only have at the most two rows and two columns. You can only have maximum of two rows and two columns only where in this dynamic splitter window. Let us see how these windows look like. Right. First here, I have just got a picture of a static splitter window, it can have up to maximum of 16 rows and columns. Here I have just named the rows and columns, that is it, I have not opened any document inside every pan. So, here say 0, 1 is a pan, right. So, it is divided into rows and columns, 0 row and say first column, right. So, first row, first column and so on. So, we have this, this is how a splitter window is going to look like. This is a static splitter window, resizing is possible, that is why so, I have uh, created, I have resized it. So, 3 comma 4, you can see row number uh, 3 and column number 4 is bigger, which means I have done some resizing, which is possible. You understand? This is done, it can be done in a static splitter window. When you talk about dynamic splitter window, you can only create two rows and only create two columns at a time. Only two rows and two columns can be created, which means you can only have maximum of four what? Windows. You can only have maximum of 4 frames in a particular window, right? So, that is going to be the limitation. But each window is going to be independent of the other one. So, if I have to resize, I can resize, I can add any new row or a column. So, that just keep in mind that it should only be 2 rows and column. I can add or delete any row and column. And there is also this kind of a, say, horizontal vertical scroll bars where you will be able to see the whole document, scroll and see the whole document and each window is independent of the other one, right. This is a dynamic splitter window, right. So, what we have discussed so far, we have discussed, first thing we discussed is what do you mean by a splitter window, second thing we discussed is what are the different types of splitter windows available, right. The next topic we are going to discuss today, it is going to be known as serialization, right. It is called as serialization. So, what do you mean by serialization? So, whenever I am creating an application in VC++, let us say I am going to create an application in VC++. We have seen some examples of how do you create applications in VC++. So, if we have created menus, we have created dialogues, right, dialogue boxes, we have created message boxes, we have created, what else? So, message boxes, dialogues, we can also, we have also created frame windows, yes or no? Frame window, a simple window also we created. So, all these things are objects. So, you can say an edit box, a static text a radio button. So, all these are uh, normal button, all these are what? Objects, right? So, what do you mean by serialization is after I create an application with all these objects, so I will be using C object class to create this application, right? Using different various objects. Now, I have to store that particular application program, okay? I have to store that application program and I should be able to retrieve it also in the future. How will I do it is my C object class or all the objects I have in my application has to be first converted into bytes. What do you mean by bytes here? I am saying my application has to be converted into binary, zeros and ones. So, I will do that conversion, right? That is called as archiving. So, what I will do? I will archive my object. C object is going to be archived. That is the first step. The second step is whatever has been archived has to be now converted into a file using a C file class. You understand? So, this whole process is called as serialization. I will have my object with me, I will convert it into binary and then store it in the form of a file. The same thing what I will do, I will open the file, okay, it will be in binary, then I will convert it into what? Object form and I will be able to see my 
application. So that process of reversing from file to object is called deserialization. Okay, from object to a file is serialization. From file to an object is called deserialization. This is the concept of serialization. To do this, what is that I should have? So I should be using these classes. First and foremost is all the objects in my application are going to be using C object class, right? So C object class will use a method called serialize to do this whole serialization process. Right. Before serializing it, what we should do? The object class has to be converted into bytes. The objects has to be converted into bytes. How will I do? I will do it using a class called C archive. C archive will convert my object class into bytes, okay, into binary. Then I will use a method called serialize. I will pass the C archive and then what happens? It will be converted into a file and it will be stored in the disk. That file is going to be stored in the disk. When saving a file, CRK object is passed to the serialize method and then a file is saved, created, right? So you can say what you can do like you, I said you can save a document and also you can retrieve a document from your database or your memory. So you can also do two things. One, you can convert it into binary and save it in a file and you can also open a file and then get back to the object form. That also can be done. How are we doing that? We are going to use two methods. One is called read object, another one is called write object. Write object will write the C archive file, serialize it and form, uh, produce a file. Okay. So read object will read the file and again convert it back to an object. Right? It will convert it back to an object. So you, how can we implement it? We can implement it using these two operators. So one operator is for read and write. So these two operators you can use. Okay. Second one is we already spoke about a method called serialize. This is the syntax of that method. Serialize passing the C archive, it will be converting it into a file. Right? So in the process of serialization, first you have to declare serial and then implement serial are the two functions which are also done. So two functions also has to be executed so that you first declare a serial that I am going to do a serialization, you are declaring it and then you are going to implement that serial. So two functions are also used. So about serialization, what you should uh, remember first, what is the process of serialization? What do you mean by deserialization? What are the various classes used? What are the methods and functions used for serialization? So this is what you should remember. Yes, so today we have discussed two topics. The first topic was known as what? Splitter window. Yes, the first topic is known as splitter window. It had two types of splitter windows. The second type was known as serialize. Second concept was serialization, right? 